Hello and welcome to the Love, Listen, Talk, Repeat podcast. I'm Wendy Capewell, your podcast host, as well as being a counsellor and psychotherapist, author and speaker. In each of these podcast episodes, I'll be joined by various guests, sharing their expertise and experiences on different subjects. So let's get on with this week's show. Karen Bashford is my guest today. She is also known as the manifest, manifesting lady. Um, she's a change mentor and energy healer. She's also a survivor of two abusive traumatic relationships. And that's something I recognize myself because I too have been in a, an abusive relationship. Um, so I'm, I'm going to hand over to Karen now so that she can tell us more about herself and then we'll start talking about this subject of abusive, traumatic relationships. Well, welcome, Karen, and let, let's hear more about you. Thank you, Wendy, for having me. Okay, me. Well, I'm psychic. I have always been psychic. Um, I love the fact I am because... I get so much information downloaded that is phenomenal. Um, so I can use that in my work itself. But um, as a person, I'm inquisitive. I like to find out what makes me tick and what makes other people tick. And it's amazing. My whole life has been chaos and confusion. But I've got to that point now where I can look at it and think, I've learned something. I learned this. I learned that. Why did this happen? Well, this happened because that happened because. And I just love it. I just love having that ability to be able to do that because we can learn so much mm. about ourselves and other people, which we can then share with other people. So, yeah, I just love it. Oh, that's delightful and I can so recognize and acknowledge that as well because I know that in my client work I, I say that part of me is is my training and continual training part of it is um, uh, what I've learned from my clients but there's a huge amount that's from my personal experiences too mm. and I never ever say I understand because that is their experience is going to be very different, aren't they? So you, you can't say, oh, I understand what you're feeling. No, I don't. But but it, it kind of, it, it allows us to say, okay, I, something similar happened to me and I can then empathise because of it. So, I, yeah, I get that sense of how much it helps our clients as well. And ourselves, wow, I'm always learning. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So how long have you been doing what you're doing? Uh, I've been a coach mentor for 10 years now. Um, my background is financial. Um, I work for a bank. I've been a financial advisor. So I started off doing money mindset. Um, so oh that's partly why I got the title, the manifesting lady. Because right. I could literally have a conversation with somebody and they would go away and a few months later I'd come back and say, you know, you told me this. Well, I've been doing it and it worked <laughs> so they keep manifesting into their lives what they wanted an example was I spoke to a young lady one day and she was saying can't for the life of me keep money in my bank account it doesn't matter what I do I need to keep money in my bank account and I, I don't know I can't even remember what I said to her but she came back and said I've maintained the balance at five thousand pounds so the money's come in and it's gone out and it still stays at £5,000. <laughs> so that's how I got my title. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's Oh, that's a lovely story. Yeah, that's just part of what I do. I do so much more than just the money mindset. So, yeah. Don't... Thank you for sharing all of that. It's interesting. It is interesting how we come from different backgrounds and then find our way into what we're doing now. Because uh, mm -hmm. I think um, we need some of those life experiences to be able to help others. I think um, I know that at um, 
22, I'd have been useless helping anybody else <laughs> because I just wouldn't have had that. Yeah, I wouldn't have had that kind of knowledge or that worldliness at all. Or, yeah, so I think um, I know I'm way past 22, but I was just picking a figure out, <laughs> out, the, out the air. But I think, yeah, I think it is going. <laughs> That's fine. I'm not going to. <laughs> I, I I said the other. I heard it, and I love this expression. I'm too young to be old, and I'm too old to be young. <laughs> oh, definitely. Age is yeah. irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, but I I just love that expression. You know, I think it's, it's just, gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so I like it. You know, we you're going to talk about we're going to you're going to share your experiences of those traumatic. Um, relationships and so okay. how what happened for you um I am very lucky my parents didn't abuse me or anything like that although my mother and father have never ever been able to tell me they love me and um, even now they can't do it um but one of the things I have realized um my first relationship was basically escaping home I didn't want to live at home anymore and so mm. I supposedly fell in love with the man I married. Um, unfortunately for me, he had a very controlling and abusive relationship with his father. And that's come out in our relationship because I didn't know myself well enough to know that I didn't feel good enough that I was um, unworthy of receiving love and consequently his um, attitude and behaviours towards me were not necessarily the kind I would have expected or have wanted. Very controlling and very manipulative, constantly arguing, constantly criticising, wouldn't do anything for himself always expected me to do things even to the point where he would find fault if I did something which was stupid because how would he know what was wrong or right if he didn't actually do it but he would always be finding fault and yeah he destroyed my confidence totally and yet ironically I was the one earning the money <laughs> I was the one doing all the work in the house and garden managing everything but he destroyed my confidence totally Oh. It it's um and I think sometimes my view is if, if somebody is physically abusive, there are you know real scars, cuts, bruises, broken bones, heaven forbid, but there is something to show you can actually mm -hmm. prove that that is abusive, that it's not acceptable, but I think when somebody is emotionally abusive, it's not easy to identify it. And they can talk it away so easily, make excuses. I can remember being told, you've got no sense of humor. I was only joking. And it, it, was, it was always put back on me that I was the one that I thought, um, and it was me who was being unreasonable. And I think that's the difficult bit because you, I, I don't know about you, but I started doubting myself. Well, it must be me. Yeah, it's a, interesting that um, when I finally did have the courage to step away and say no more, um, my family actually thought that I was being unreasonable because he talked them into believing it was all my fault. So they took him on. I was left out in the cold wow. and they took him on because he was that good wow. at convincing everyone that it was me that was the unreasonable one. Yeah. Mm. And often in public, or with friends, they can plead that little boy lost, or you know, I don't know what the problem is, or I think they can appear so loving and kind, and it's it's 
it's shrouded in that, isn't it? This kind of yeah. that um, sense of that. Yeah. yeah. People have no idea what goes on behind closed doors. No. No idea at all. So what gave you the courage to walk away? Um, I recognise that I was working as a financial advisor and if anyone phoned me up on my home number, he would accuse them of having an affair with me. And it was like, there was this light bulb moment of, does he really think that I'm going to have affairs with people who are my clients, who are paying me money? Why would I want to do that? And it was like this moment of, oh my God, really? Am I putting up with this? <laughs> it really was. It was such an eye-opening moment. It was, mm. it was almost as if somebody had put a brick wall in front of me and I'd wound straight into it and it was, oh, oh my God, really? <laughs> so yeah, that was that moment where you always land up with a tipping point that something is mm. so bad that you actually recognize that you can't keep going. And I think my fault at that mm. point was if I stayed with him, I'd land up in a mental hospital, not him, me. And I thought, no, yeah. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that for him. Hmm. Yes, I think it is. It comes to a hiatus. And I, th I think, I don't know what the st recent statistics are, but I, I do remember reading several years ago that it took seven times for a woman to leave an abusive mm. relationship. Yeah. Does not surprise um, and me? I yeah, and it could. You know, I, I don't know what the figures are now by any means, but I, um, but that those were the latest figures that I knew. And that, and when you work with somebody who's kind of saying, yeah, they're going to leave, and you tell you know you support them, and then they don't do it, and it's frustrating. But it's you can also appreciate there's something about that trauma bonding. There's something yeah. about it's what I know, it's, there's the hope that's attached to it. They promise mm -hmm. they'll change, they promise they won't do it again. Um, there's so many things that we, we want to be loved. Mm, and totally. we, we, we hang on to that hope. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think for me as well, A, yes, I did want to be loved. But as much as anything, it was the fact that I put all my time and effort into our home and I was going to lose that because because he didn't work, he could claim maintenance off of me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because he didn't work. He could claim maintenance. And it was like, am I prepared to accept that? So it was a case of just continually trying to make it work. But as I say, it, I hit that brick wall that day and I thought, I don't care anymore. And I did literally lose everything. I lost my home. Mm. I couldn't go to work anymore because if I maintained being a financial advisor, earning good money, he would claim on me. So I had to stop working. So I lost everything wow. in that relationship because of my divorce. But it was well worth it. Yeah. Never, ever regretted <laughs> it. <laughs> Not getting divorced. <laughs> No, I can identify with that as well because, um, yes, he made he made the divorce as difficult as possible. He wasn't working either. He was had mental health issues, okay, um, which I began to resent at one point because I felt there were certain things he felt able to do and others he didn't. So he, he chose the things he couldn't do. Um, that's how I felt anyway. Um, and so the divorce, he, he, he didn't care about how much money, he took all our savings and poured mm. it all into the divorce. All his my all our savings, which was in his name because I trusted him, mm -hmm. um, that was it. And I had to take out loans. I had to sell the house. Um, at a loss, you know, not completely, but a lot less simply because of the way the divorce came out. And um, 
yeah, I had I had to start all over again. And it's yeah, but but like you say, it was well worth it because I yeah, not at the time, but boy, afterwards you think, gosh, I'm I'm free, and I can mm-hmm. find myself again, and I can rebuild my confidence and be the person I want to be. Yeah, and who okay. I really am. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally agree with but that. It takes takes so much courage though doesn't it and we just make those excuses yeah I think Mm. for me it was it was the fact that I wasn't going to be going home every day thinking what state was he going to be in what mood was he going to be in what was what would I expect because I never knew when I walked through that door I just had no idea what to expect when I walked through that door you know, he could be as mm. nice as pie or he could be really grumpy and fed up and just complain, and just criticize and find fault. It got to the point where I couldn't even eat an apple without being told it was too noisy. He was that upset with me that he, he wasn't happy with himself. So he had to find fault with me because it was my fault. Mm. so yeah Mm. it does take courage to deal with that but it's that sense of relief once you realize you have walked through that door and that's the last time you will be going through that door with him on the other side of it it's a gorgeous feeling and as I say I knew I was going to lose everything but it was so worth it not to be walking through that door Mm. Yes. Yes, it's um there is a sense of relief. It took me longer. Um I had to move. I moved completely away from where I'd previously lived because I he'd made veiled threats about what might happen to me, what might happen to my children. He had three sons who were not very nice. He taught them to be that way because that's how he protected himself. I need to show them how to stand up for themselves. So he used to beat them. So therefore they became vicious, Mm. um, very um, unpleasant men. And so I was quite fearful um, Mm. of what he or what one of them might do. So I moved away, changed jobs, um, pleaded with my employers not to and friends not to tell anyone where I was moving to Um, and for the first few months I was I was really anxious even walking through the door here you know it was um I'd kind of run through the door you know especially if it was dark I'd keep the blinds closed I you know I was always anxious um as to what I might find or what might happen so it took it, it did drain me completely you know looking back on it it was a bit yeah, I'm like you. I nearly ended up, you know, absolutely in a um, very distressed mental state. I think I was lucky in the sense of, yes, I knew he could be very controlling and manipulative and very judgmental, but he didn't really have the capacity to be violent I knew that but at the Mm. same time I was conscious he could make my life hell and interestingly Mm. enough he come back 22 years later to make my life hell wow 22 years later yeah um by which time he definitely (laughs) sorry by which time he definitely had health mental health issues and um he started threatening me online, um, trying to ruin my reputation, accusing me of all kinds of things online. And initially it was fear, pure fear kicked in. Oh my God, how do I deal with this? What do mm. I do? You know, and I'd be literally standing at my window, looking out the curtain, thinking, is he out there? Is, where is he? What's he doing? It was horrendous. And then suddenly this anger just kicked in. And it was like, how dare he? 
22 years. He's waited 22 years. No chance. <laughs> and pure rage took over. And I phoned the police. And they were absolutely brilliant because one of the things they recognised was the fact that he was deliberately going onto my social media and making allegations. And they were absolutely brilliant about it. They took him in for questioning in the end. And he was warned that if he misbehaved in any way, shape or form, even if I didn't agree to it, they would take him to court. So um, it was right. a beautiful feeling knowing I had that blanket of security in place. But it also yes, meant that I'm I sure. had to deal with those emotions that obviously I hadn't dealt with at the time. Ah. Mm. And I think that it's something, I'm, I'm sure you come across it with clients as well. That you know they 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 deal with things on a practical level mm -hmm. and push down all their emotions because they need to feel in control, mm -hmm. but they don't recognise it's all bubbling away under the surface in their body, and it it's going to manifest itself some way or another. Yeah, if they don't deal with it at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I don't know how you feel, but I notice it can either be emotional or, or physical. Some will become physically ill, they'll get an illness or um, something will happen because it's just stuck in the body. Yeah, I actually yeah. become physically ill. I, I landed up with an autoimmune disease because of it. Wow. Which um, basically knocked me for six. I couldn't eat hardly any food. I reacted to water even if I drank water. If it hadn't been filtered, I could react to it and kind of things like that. Um, it was an, Ill, uh, an autoimmune that apparently normally most people get at four years old. I decided to get it when I was 40. Gosh. So it had been bubbling up the whole time that I'd been married to him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And all the more reason to deal with it. All the more reason to deal with it, people. You know, that's just get over it. Just, you know, let it go. Just move forward. Positive thinking. It will be okay. But we have to give it that space to be able to heal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's like you work with clients to take them through the emotional processes and such. I do it more on a soul level basis. So it's very much connecting back to who you really are and working from that basis mm -hmm. outwards. And it's both ways are appropriate. It doesn't matter how you do it. Mm -hmm. You have to take that time, give yourself that space to do it. You have to, or else it will come back to bite you later on. Mm. Yeah, I, it's painful going through it. Mm. There's no question of that healing is it's it's not an easy ride. But but I always think it's it's you take those steps towards it, back off. You take the steps towards it, back off. Mm. But you're going to have to, you know, every time it feels uncomfortable. But every time you're going through the same pain instead of healing, yeah, because you you've just you know you're approaching it but you feel scared, uncomfortable, whatever. Um, it's too difficult. But then, you, you know, once you're through that, it's, it's much more healing and therapeutic, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've learned a lot from the experiences. I've recognised why I got into the relationship mm. in the first place. I recognised how I handled things just to be able to, I often think we handle things to survive and it's not until we actually go through the healing do we start to thrive. And it's that yes. aspect that is so, so important because you can just be in survival mode. So I hate the word victim 
I really hate that word because that means you're still giving your power away. You Mm -hmm. are a survivor. You have been through something that's been horrendous. You have survived it. You're no longer the victim because you're not in it. So why would you want to carry on being the victim when actually you can take the time to heal through having survived to then start thriving? And to me, that's the best thing you could possibly do for yourself. Yes, definitely. I think once we label ourselves in that way, then we're behaving that way. You know, poor me, poor me, poor me. I can remember, oh, yes, I think it was when I was training and it was um, when I realised that one of the things that I carried around with, with me was not feeling good enough. And then it was, oh, well, that's, that's, that's the reason for me. That, that's my problem. I wear it like a badge. It was like tattooed on my forehead. And I was almost wallowing in it. And I thought, well, hang on a minute. No, 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 no. You're not going to stay there. This is crazy. No. You, you, if you're going to stay there, you're going to be miserable for the rest of your life. Now you know what happened in your life and why you behave that way. Now you've got that knowledge, you can do something about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yes, I can remember that wallowing stage. It was like, oh, strutting around going, well, it's because I'm not good enough. Like, oh, get over yourself. I really was in victim mode. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I guess yes. I needed that little bit of wallowing. I needed that, I think. It was I part think... of the healing in a way, just to acknowledge yeah. that and feeling that uncomfortableness and making some sense of why we, you know, it's all part of our journey, isn't it? Why we behave in a certain way. Mm, yeah. Mm. yeah. It's, it's that Interesting. process I, I think like, that we have to mm. go through to understand who we really are. And when we get to that point of, oh, I am this person, I like this person, and then you go from liking to actually loving. And then you think, actually, I deserve so much more. And you start recognizing that you do and you start bringing things to you that recognize that, yeah, I am this person and I deserve this. So it's gorgeous. It absolutely it takes time. It always takes time. Yes, of course. Yeah. And I think one of the things is, is actually acknowledging our shadow side, you know, the bits that we, we don't really want to recognize, we don't want to acknowledge, you know, those parts that maybe we have unpleasant thoughts about things or people or, um, you know, I say that I've got the bitch inside me and okay, it's not, but I have, to, I don't like it, but I have to own it because that is you know, I'm not all sugar and spice and, you know, nice person, because that's not real. No, I've tried being a Gemini. Yeah. <laughs> Got two of me. <laughs> we have, we're so multifaceted, aren't we? And I think some people just, they don't like to admit that actually they can have unpleasant thoughts or feel annoyed or, you know, if they're let down or I've always got to be the nice person and actually no I think that's um that's not being real with us is it well as a Gemini I do know that I can have this really lovely friendly side but upset me oh my god (laughs) (laughs) I I can't be that bitch from hell unfortunately (laughs) doesn't come out very often but but it's necessary it's there. yeah it's there it's of part it of me and sometimes it's necessary to come out because if you don't recognize what's going on and let somebody walk all over you what chance have you got mm. so yeah sometimes exactly. it's that yeah. that side of you that says no no more <laughs> so yeah 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 we all have, yeah. We all have one so yeah of course of course yeah, so it is getting to know ourselves, isn't it? And that space, isn't it? The space and the time. Um, 
and allowing and just being. And I think a lot of people don't like being. They have to fill their time up because to be um, means that they have to start acknowledging things that may be a bit unpleasant, which people don't enjoy doing. Yeah. Fill your time up. I'm busy, busy, busy. No, I don't have time. I don't have time. But Mm -hmm. yeah, a bit false, really. Yes. Oh, wow. I think we could talk for ages, Karen, and maybe you'll come on again and we'll have another chat at some point. But I so enjoyed having you as a guest. So what do you, what do you suggest that one person who maybe is in an abusive relationship or feeling that that's what happens to them over and over again? What, what can someone take away with them? I think the best thing that I ever realised, even in my relationship, was that I am in control of how I feel. Nobody else controls how I feel. So if I choose to feel upset, that's my choice. If I choose to feel that actually he can bully me, that's my choice. There's always an opposite. We can choose the opposite. And I think Mm -hmm. if more and more women, especially if they've been in abusive relationships, realize that they have a choice, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be willing to just accept what's given to them. They'd stand Mm. up. Yeah. And if we don't respect ourselves, nobody else will. No. And it's, yeah, we can recognise that having come out the the other side, both of us, we can recognise that, but equally be compassionate to those women who are stuck in that situation and feel they don't have a way out because we know it's difficult and we were probably in different situations than some of the women where, you know, they've got, they're reliant, maybe they've got children and maybe they're just completely reliant on that partner, nowhere else to go. Um, so I think it is just being that, showing that compassion, but equally saying we we get it, we we get that how awful it is to be in an abusive relationship. Um, and maybe right this minute is not the right time for you to leave it. No, but no we always have to make that can. choice when we are ready to go. We can't. Nobody can tell us. People can ask questions, why are you still in it and everything? But we have to make that decision ourselves. Nobody can force us to make that decision. No matter how much they want us Mm. to, we have to make that decision Mm. ourselves. Mm. Yeah, you do, that's right. Wow, so thank you, Karen. What's one easy way that people can get in touch with you? I mean, I will put all your details in the show notes, but what's an easy way if someone's just listening? They can go to my website, karenbashford.com. Very easy. There's the connection to send me an email there. More than welcome to come through that way. So, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for being my guest today. Thank you for having me. It's been great. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'd love to hear from you and what you think. So do get in touch. If you'd like to learn more about me, how I help people who are struggling with issues relating to their personal life or relationships, as well as finding out how you can work with me, go to my website, www.wendycapewell.co.uk, where you can find my contact details and book a free call with me. You really don't have to struggle alone. Until next time, take care. Bye.